Welcome to the news hour bulletin on Aflao TV, the heart of Africa. We are transmitting live from Avreme Aflao in the Ketu South municipality of the Volta region. We are live on Facebook, your multi TV channel, as well as on other social media platforms. We invite you to be part of our programs through our sponsorship packages. In this edition of our news bulletin, Aplau TV begins news bulletins on weekdays. Traditionalists at Aplau perform sacred rituals to cleanse the township and also fight COVID-19. The Biakuye District Assembly in the Oti region takes delivery of 180 metal dual decks. We will also bring you some news from the business and entertainment world. This and many more we have for you today in this edition of our news bulletin. My name is Seraphine Diku. Stay tuned. We will be right back. Your favorite station, Aplau TV, located in the Aplau Township in the K2 South Municipality in the Volta region, has begun its news bulletin. The news bulletin will always be live on all Aplau channel from exactly 5 to 6 p.m. on all weekdays. The station is poised to rock shoulders with any other station within the country. Dozens of the traditionalists from the Aplau traditional area in the Ketusaf municipality of the Volta region and Aplau Sagbado in the Republic of neighboring Togo on Tuesday night gathered at their traditional home at the Togbi Fiti Junction or Square at Aplau to perform some sacred rites and rituals aimed, among other things, at spiritually cleansing the entire Aplau Township in addiction to fighting the COVID-19 pandemic, which has become part and parcel of the country's social life. Rebecca Oklu and Bliss Kijel have filed the following reports for our news bulletin. <laughs> rich culture, tradition, and customs of the Aplau traditional area in particular and the Everest in general were at display on Tuesday night when our news team arrived at the Togwi Fiti Square at about 9.30 p.m. Members of the Aflau chapter of the Ghana Psychic and Traditional Healers Association comprising the traditional priests and priestesses were in attendance. According to the leaders of the event, the rituals and traditional prayers were being organized to spiritually cleanse a flower and its entirety. In addition to fighting the COVID-19 pandemic, which they believe was occasioned by the sins of mankind. As part of the ritual ceremony, animals such as goats, sheep and cattle were being killed for consumption by the gods. Libation and other prayers were also poured and held in the night across the entire Aflau Township. A spokesperson for the fetish priests and traditionalists told our TV news that the rituals are not only annual but also for the benefit of the entire area in particular and Ghana as a whole. He spoke ever. <laughs> Uh, 
One of the fetish priests at the event also praised Aflau TV for giving space on its airwaves for the rich culture of the people to be telecast to the entire world. The Biakwe District Assembly at Nkonya Enkru in the Ote region has taken delivery of 180 metal dwellers for its basic schools. The deaths were produced by the Party Trigana Limited through the District Assembly Common Fund. District Chief Executive DCE for the area, Comfort Akua Atta, told our news team in an interview at Nkonya Ahenkru that the furniture will go a long way to solve some of the school's furniture problems. The Biakuya district is one of the key and important districts in the OT region in that it is the gateway to the newly created region when entering from the Kwando municipality of the Volta region. As part of efforts to address the furniture deficit at the basic schools across the district, the assembly took delivery of 180 metal dual decks from the Party Tree Ghana Limited in Accra. The district chief executive for the area, Honorable Comfort Equiata, told our news team in an interview that the furniture will reduce the district's 2000 furniture deficit situation. We have a furniture deficit of about 2000. And uh, over the years, we have been trying to produce some. I think uh, two years ago, uh, we gave to some of the secondary schools. Nkonya Senior High received about 400 pieces. Um, uh, other schools have also received. We have produced of about a thousand and distributed to schools. Uh, this one, fortunately, yesterday, uh, we received these ones from, uh, uh, you can see them here. They are about 180 pieces, and they are coming from Party 3 Ghana Limited. That's the company that produced this one for us through the Common Fund Administration. And so uh, we are very grateful to them. Uh, the Education Director has presented a number of schools and the quantities that are needed. We'll be meeting and then we'll see to the distribution. Uh, we'll not want to keep them here for too long. Uh, immediately on Monday, all this furniture you are seeing here will be going to the schools. But as to the numbers, uh, that one I'll be uh, briefed 
by the education director because she is directly with the schools. So she can tell me the quantities that each school needs. It's unfortunate they are just 180. We are praying that we get more. Honorable Ekwiata was also of the view that the guest star will go a long way to improve teaching and learning in the beneficiary schools. Without furniture, learning becomes, teaching and learning becomes a very big problem because the children need to sit comfortably to be able to absorb whatever they are being taught. So, though they are not many, they will go a long way to at least uh, solve some of our furniture problem and we are so grateful and thankful to uh, the MP, the common fund administration and then the company uh, party tree company limited for this donation yes the Seven Seas Salt Mining Company Limited at Adina in the Ketu South Municipality of the Volta region is constructing a bridge across the main Denu Adina Road in order to access brine water from the Atlantic Ocean for its operations. The project, which is expected to be completed within the month of March, would boost the local salt mining business as well as the employment sector of the economy. The coastal belt of the country, stretching from Aflau in Ketu South to areas in the western and western north regions, is endowed with natural deposits of salt, which has over the years contributed to the economic existence of the residents of these areas. At Adina in the Ketusau municipality, salt winning is a common economic activity among the people with the Seven Seas Company Limited leading one of the salt production projects in the area. The company is currently constructing a bridge across a portion of the Denu Adina Road in order to pump seawater into its ponds for salt production. The project which is being funded from the company's resources would shift its heavy reliance on borehole water in the area for its operations to the use of sea or brine water which would expand production levels. The public relations officer of the Seven Seas Company Limited, Adams Mensa, told Aflau TV in an interview that the project would geared up local production and also impact positively on employment opportunities of the people of the area. The sea brine is purposely for the salt production. Initially we started using uh, boho water but as uh, we keep on expanding the water from the boho is becoming less and less for the project. So uh, long term it is in our plan to draw water from the sea. So this will serve as a conduit for the water. So that is what we are doing at the moment. We started this uh, some few uh, weeks back and uh, it is our intention to finish around 15th of March. Yeah, so by this week we'll do the concrete, we'll finish with the concrete work. So we'll leave it to cure for 21 days. So we are looking at something like March 15th thereabout then the curing process will be, will, will, will be finished. Then uh, we'll just come and do refilling uh, and then put latrite on it. And then we we'll open it for vehicular movement. Mm, expectation is to gear up local uh, production and then local employment as well. Because when you expand, you need more hands. So expansion is aimed at what employing more people so that's the, 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 the achievement that the locals can get from this project that we are doing at the moment he announced that the company recently gave out some resettlement packages to the residents adding that the gesture was a requirement by law uh, it is uh, within the law that whenever this sort of projects is ongoing uh, within the law, we sup you're supposed to pay a compensation. 
So that is what we've just done to the communities. And uh, it ran through from Agbava Copper to Peza Copper, Nagba Copper. Hedrana will also be getting Adafienu, all these communities up to Blakusu. So those are the communities, communities that benefited. Yeah, so it is a, a requirement by the law. And we have, as a legal entity, we have to comply with the law. The compensation package ranges from size, sizes of the various uh, communities. So the payment was done according to the size of uh, the land location of, uh, of the community. So it is not spe I mean, uh, a specific amount that is given to all the communities, which ranges from community to community. Yes. Uh, the minus ranges from 400 to 700, depending on availability of labor force. So when we expand from here to Hedranau side, and then also to Blakusu side, we are looking at something at the range of 3,000 and over uh, as uh, minus. Permanent workers will be gearing up to 200, yes. And uh, apart from that, we also have indirect sort of, uh, yes, beneficiaries, like drivers, like those who are into uh, food uh, preparation and all those things. Um, people are coming from Togo, Benin, Nigeria, Niger. When they come, they don't say come today and leave tomorrow. They sleep. So that is also good news for those who are having these accommodations for hotel uh, lodges and all those things. Yes. So it gives a lot of uh, job opportunities to a lot of people. We'll take a short break. We'll be right back. Welcome back from the break. We now take our entertainment news. Social media platform Twitter has been inundated with comments in reaction to Yvonne Nelson's message to President Nana Ado Dankua Akufu Ado about the country's health sector. The popular actress on March 1st, 2021, conveyed a message to President Akufu Ado via Twitter as regards the neglect of Ghana's health sector, which according to her, has infuriated some Ghanaians, especially on the back of the growing desire by politicians to seek medical attention abroad. Yvonne Nelson observed that leaders have taken the country for granted for too long and only take delight in winning elections. In her fury, the popular actress who led the famous Doom Song Master video in 2015 to protest the erratic power supply that bedeviled the country stressed that citizens deserve a better health sector. Although Yvonne Nelson made no references, her tweet comes a few days after Ken Ofori Atta, the finance minister nominee, traveled to the United States of America for specialist medical review. After suffering medical complication occasioned by COVID-19, which was diagnosed in December, an official statement from the Ministry of Finance issued on February 14 said he is expected to spend two weeks away on the trip, seeking further medical intervention not currently available in Ghana. It is, however, imperative to state that it is not the first time a government official has had to be traveled outside for treatment for the same reason. We now take our final news, which is business. The Chamber of Petroleum Consumers, COPEC, is calling for a review of the price stabilization levy to minimize the impact of the surge in fuel prices on consumers. Oil prices have seen a significant increase 
over the last few weeks with some oil marketing companies currently selling a liter of petrol for 5 CDs, 35 pesos. The situation is raising concerns among transport operators who are threatening to increase lorry fares in order to at least break even. According to the Executive Secretary of COPEC, Duncan Amua, the government must act soon to protect the interests of consumers. The price stabilization levy was first applied in December 2017 as a windfall tax. At the same time, the decision was to cut down on the supposed excessive profits to be made by the oil marketing companies due to the continuous drop in oil prices on the global market. Oil price on the global market has seen a significant increase, currently selling at about $66 per barrel. There has been a more than $10 increase from its selling price of about $55. Locally, the situation has had a ripple effect on prices of fuel late last year as it sold for about 4 CD, 80 pesos per litre. But the price shot up to about 5 CD, 10 pesos per liter in January this year. On Friday, a number of oil marketing companies further increased their prices at about 5 CD, 35 pesos per liter. Although there are other companies selling at 4 CD, 70 pesos per liter. We will go for a short break. We will be right back. all we have for you today now a recap of the headlines Cloud TV begins news bulletins on weekdays traditionalists at Aplau perform sacred rituals to cleanse the township and also fight COVID-19 the Biakuye district assembly in the Oti region takes delivery of 180 metal dual decks all thanks to my production team. Thanks for watching.